Good morning. Good morning. Am I visible and audible? Okay, yes, I'm here. So, good morning to all of you students and welcome back to the series that I've started. Starting with the radial nerve for you, especially for you, radial nerve and if uh, we'll see the spaces around the arm. So if time for this, we'll do that. So first, let us start with radial nerve. Now, students, before I begin, um, just a brief about the posterior compartment of the arm and forearm. Because radial nerve is a nerve which compartment? Yes, students, be interactive, answers, it will be easy for you. Hmm? So radial nerve is a nerve of which compartment? It's a nerve of the posterior compartment of the arm and forearm. Posterior compartment, that's a radial nerve, arm and forearm. So radial nerve will supply the muscles of the arm, the muscles of the forearm. Right. The muscles of the arm are going to do what? Extension at the elbow joint. And the muscles of the forearm are going to do dorsiflexion at the wrist joint. Dorsiflexion of the wrist with some other actions also. We'll see that as time proceeds, as we proceed. Now, um, so which are the muscles on the back of the arm? Anyone? Students, which are the muscles on the back of the arm? If you know, you answer. The muscle is triceps. Triceps. Let's say triceps has got three heads, three heads. Which are those three heads of the triceps? One is the long head, other one is the medial head, and the third one is the lateral head of triceps. The long head, the medial head, and the lateral head of the triceps. There's no short head, remember. Long head, medial head, lateral head. If you can quickly tell me, I'll just make this for you. Just one moment, uh, just one moment, but you, yeah. So, what is the long head of triceps? What is the medial and the lateral head taken from? I've made this as a scapula. I made this as the dorsal aspect of the scapula. You can, you can see the spine and the acromion process. That's the humerus. That's the spinal groove behind. You're looking at the scapula and the humerus from a posterior approach, posterior view. Now, what is this muscle? What is this muscle which begins from the... Uh, scapula below the glenoid cavity and this tubercle is what we call as the infraglenoid tubercle infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and there's a muscle which begins from this infraglenoid tubercle and this is the long head of triceps that's the long head of triceps now what is this groove that's the spiral groove or the radial groove and there's a muscle which begins above the spiral groove, just above the spiral groove. What is that head of triceps? That's the lateral head of triceps, lateral head. And there's a nerve which begins from below the spiral groove and the shaft, below the spiral groove and the shaft. What is that head? That's the medial head of triceps, medial head. That's the lateral head of triceps and that's the long head of triceps. Fine, students. So three heads of triceps. One is the long head, which arises from the infraglenoid tubercle of scapula. The, the lateral head, which arises above the spiral groove and the medial head, which arises from the shaft below the spiral groove. And this, which is the largest head of the triceps, students, that's the medial head of triceps, medial head. And this medial head is the largest head of triceps. So this medial head is supplied twice. Okay, it is supplied twice. Do bar supplied that once it is supplied in the axilla and once it is supplied in the spiral groove, in the axilla and in the spiral groove. So now you tell me, students, all these three heads will join together. Okay, these three heads are going to be joining together. So that's the medial head. This is going to be the long head coming from here. And the lateral head will, will, will go over the spiral groove. Look, it will cover the spiral groove like this. And that's how it is going to protect the nerve and the vessels passing through the spiral groove. What is the nerve and vessel passing through the spiral groove? That's the <coughs> radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery. So it will protect the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery passing through the spiral groove. So together, these three heads join to form a common tendon which is inserted on the Olecranon process, olecranon process of Allah. So that's the olecranon process of Allah. Clear? What is the action of triceps? Students, 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 what is the action of triceps? It is extension at the elbow joint. Extension at the elbow joint. The long head of triceps now crosses the shoulder joint also. So what is it also going to do? Extension at the shoulder joint. Extension at the shoulder joint, right? So acting as a whole, when we talk about actions of triceps students, 
acting as a whole this muscle is going to cause extension at the elbow joint extension at the elbow joint in addition in addition the long head also causes extension at the shoulder joint extension at the shoulder joint so what is the nerve passing from here which is the nerve which goes through the spiral groove that's the radial nerve and there's an artery here which artery is that students that's the profunda brachii artery radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery clear yeah, that's it so that's about the posterior aspect of the arm now coming to the posterior aspect of the forearm let us start with the posterior aspect of forearm now posterior aspect of forearm the muscles are divided into two sets those sets mein hote hain muscles forearm posterior aspect i'll make it like this i call this as the superficial muscles and i call this as the deep muscles superficial muscles and the deep muscles okay if you can just enumerate the muscles for me the superficial muscles one is anconius just remember it like this one is the anconius second is the brachioradialis brachioradialis third extensor carpi radialis longus so superficial muscles one is the anconius the brachioradialis the extensor carpi radialis longus the extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum i'm writing this in short okay so anconius brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis extensor digitorum extensor digitorum minimum and extensor carpi डॉक्टर Pollicis longus, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, extensor intarsis. ट Clear? So, what is the nerve supply of this muscle? I'll just tell you the nerve supply before I proceed. What is the nerve supply of this muscle? Now, these three muscles, anconius, brachioradialis, and ischial, are supplied by radial nerve. Supplied by radial nerve. Rest all the muscles. Rest all the muscles from extensor carpi radialis brevis till all these muscles will be supplied by. The posterior interosseous nerve, posterior interosseous nerve, and this posterior interosseous nerve is a deep branch of radial nerve. Posterior interosseous nerve is a deep branch of radial nerve. I'm, I'm just telling you this before I start with the main topic. Okay, so what is the nerve supply? Google, students, 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 just tell me. Are you clear with the muscles of the forearm? Muscles of the forearm. Which are the superficials? Which are the deep muscles? I'll just quickly go through it. The superficial muscles: one is anconius, the brachioradialis, the ECRL, the ECRB, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digitorum minimi, and the extensor carpi ulnaris. The deep muscles: abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, supinator, okay, and extensor indices. So these are the deep muscles. 
Out of this, the first three muscles, the first three superficial muscles are supplied by radial nerve, radial nerve. Rest, all the muscles will be supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve. And this posterior interosseous nerve is a deep branch of radial nerve, deep branch of radial nerve. Where it gives this branch and how it gives that all, I'll be telling you now. Okay, so with this concept, with this concept of the muscles of the arm and the forearm, let us now begin students with the radial nerve, radial nerve. Okay, starting here with the radial nerve. Now you be interactive, you answer, huh, students, you be interactive with me, you answer. Now starting with the radial nerve. Uh, right, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just start with this. Now tell me, radial nerve, what is, uh, it's a branch of which cord? Students, 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 you answer. Radial nerve is a continuation uh, of which cord of the brachial plexus? It's it's a continuation of which cord of the brachial plexus? The posterior cord. Posterior cord. Radial nerve is a continuation of the posterior cord. What is the root value of radial nerve? Root value. Anyone? What is the root value of radial nerve? C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. C5 to T1. That's the root value. C5 to T1. That's the root value of radial nerve. Now, radial nerve is first in the axilla. Axilla. From the axilla, it goes back. It goes back in the spiral groove. From the spiral groove, it comes here on the lateral aspect of the arm, and then it enters into the cubital fossa. Then it enters into the cubital fossa. So, yes. So it begins in the axilla. First, it's in the axilla. Then it enters the spiral groove. Then it comes on the lateral aspect of the arm, and finally, it goes into the cubital fossa. With this concept of radial nerve, understand the radial nerve. Uh, so I'll just make it like this. It's a branch of posterior cord. Branch of posterior cord. I'll, I'll just um, stop using the highlighter and use a pen instead. Branch of posterior cord. What is the root value? Root value is C5 to T1. All the roots. All the roots. So now, radial nerve is first in the axilla. Understand the way I'm telling you. In the axilla, this is the easiest way to understand the radial nerve. Okay, in the axilla, I use two muscular branches and one cutaneous branch. Two muscular, one cutaneous branch. Now, two muscular branches, it gives to the long head of triceps long head of triceps and the medial head of triceps so two muscular branches one is to the long head of triceps and one is to the medial head of triceps one is to the medial head of triceps one cutaneous branch that is the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm posterior cutaneous nerve of arm this it supplies the skin on the posterior aspect of the arm so in the axilla, the radial nerve gives two muscular and one cutaneous branches. Muscular branches are given to the long head of triceps and the medial head of triceps. Long and medial head of triceps. The cutaneous branch, that's the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. Posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. Now coming down in the spiral groove. In the spiral groove. Again, it gives two sets of branches. How do you remember this? Students, 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 how do you remember this? Look, it's a very easy way that I'm telling you. Add one to this, add one to this. So in the axilla, how many muscular, how many cutaneous? Two muscular, one cutaneous. So in the spiral two, add one, one. So it becomes three muscular and two cutaneous. Three muscular branches and two cutaneous branches. Muscular branch is like, you tell me when it is passing through the spiral groove. When the radial nerve is passing through the spiral groove, we've just drawn this. This one muscle above the groove and this one muscle below the groove. Which is the muscle above the groove? The lateral head of triceps. The below the groove is the medial head of triceps. The lateral and the medial head of triceps and one cut two cutaneous branches are the lateral head of triceps the medial head of triceps which is the third muscular branch given to the third muscular branch is going to supply the anconius anconius so now clear three muscular branches one is to the lateral head one is to the medial head and the third goes to the anconius anconius muscle right two cutaneous branches which are these two cutaneous branches one is the posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm 
posterior cutaneous nerve forearm and second is the lower lateral lower lateral cutaneous nerve of Lower lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Just understand this. You know the muscles, so muscles will be clear, I suppose. Huh? Muscles clear, right? Axilla may how many muscular, how many cutaneous? Two muscular, one cutaneous. Just remember the way I told you. Two muscular, one cutaneous. Two muscular branches are given to one is a long head of triceps and dosra meter head of triceps. Cutaneous branch, that's a posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. Posterior cutaneous nerve of arm. Now, coming to the spiral groove, how many muscular, how many cutaneous? Add one here, one here. So it becomes three muscular, two cutaneous. Three muscular, two cutaneous. Muscular branches are given to the lateral head of triceps, the medial head of triceps, and the anconius. Anconius. The lateral head, the medial head, and the anconius. Two cutaneous branches. One is the posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm. Posterior cutaneous nerve forearm. Here, here, here. And the other one is the lower lateral. Here they go. This is the lateral aspect of the arm. Students, that's the lateral aspect of the arm. We divide it into two half. Half, half. Upper lateral half and lower lateral. Upper lateral aspect of arm, lower lateral aspect of arm. The lower lateral aspect of the arm is a branch of radial nerve given in spiral groove. Given in the spiral groove. That means who supplies the skin on the lower lateral aspect of the arm. That's the radial nerve. And students, students, if you can just quickly tell me who supplies the skin on the upper lateral aspect of the arm. Yes, come on, the question is open to you. You can answer this. Who supplies the skin on the upper lateral aspect of the arm? Answer. Who supplies the skin on the upper lateral aspect of the arm? Students, bolo. Axillary. Axillary now. The skin on the upper lateral aspect of the arm is supplied by axillary nerve. And the name of the nerve is upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Okay? Upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. And when there's an injury to this nerve, there's a loss of sensations here. And this is what we call as the regimen badge sign. Regimen badge. Regimen batch B A T G A batch sign. You know the army people, the army they put a batch here, huh? the army officials they put a batch here, and this batch is what we call as the regimen batch. Regimen batch. So there's a loss of sensations here, and this is what we call as regimen batch sign. This is um, injury to the axillary nerve. Injury to the axillary nerve, there's a loss of sensations here on the upper lateral aspect of the arm and that is what we call as regimen bad sign. Clear students, any doubts? Yeah, the push, koi doubts hai. So uh, we are starting from the axilla. So uh, first the radial nerve is in the axilla. Then it comes in the spiral crew. Okay. Now the radial nerve will come to the lateral aspect of the arm. Lateral aspect of the arm. Lateral aspect of the arm. I'll have to draw this line for you, but I'll just write this down. What does it supply? It supplies the brachialis. Brachialis muscle. Lateral half of brachialis, lateral half. It supplies the brachioradialis. It supplies the extents of carpi radialis longus. The precalis, the precuradalis, and the extents of carpi radialis longus. I'll draw this line for you, students, you'll understand. It supplies the precalis, the precuradalis, and the ECRL, extents of carpi radialis longus. Dear students, are you following this? Students, 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 bolo something, you talk something, students don't just sit, you talk something, so I come to know. Huh? So, right. so that's about the, uh, I'll draw a slide for you, Deco. I'll make a slide for you. Huh? I'll have to clear this to make a slide. Okay, now look at this. Now look at this slide. Uh, 
That's the front, huh? Aage se dekh rahe ho, that's the front. That's the humerus here. Mm, and that's it. Okay. Now this is the front. Saamne se dekh rahe ho. Tell me what is this muscle which begins from the shaft of the humerus. Middle half of the shaft of the humerus. This is the precarious. Precarious. What is this now? That's the medial epicondyle. This is medial. This is lateral epicondyle. That's the medial supracondylar ridge. That's the lateral supracondylar ridge. From the lateral supracondylar ridge, two muscles arise. One is the brachial radialis, and one is the extensor carpi radialis largus. The brachial radialis and the ECRL. Now, the radial, our radial nerve was first in the axilla. From the axilla, it goes back, back, back. I'm drawing it dotted. Here, can I hold a spiral groove? From the axilla, it enters the spiral groove. From the spiral groove, it turns, 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 and comes here. Look at this, students. Where's the radial nerve? Look, look, look. It's come on the lateral aspect of the arm. It, it's come on the lateral aspect of the arm. Anterior lateral, anterior lateral aspect of the arm. Here, on the lateral aspect of the arm, the radial nerve lies between two groups of muscles, two sets of muscles. Who's the muscle on the medial side? Who's the muscle on the medial side? That's the brachialis. And who's the muscle on the lateral side? That's the brachioradialis and ECRL. On the lateral side, brachioradialis and ECRL. So radial nerve is going to supply this three muscles. This three muscles: the brachialis, the brachioradialis, and the ECRL. Following this, this three muscles, the radial nerve is going to supply. So what is this Roman number one? I make it like this: Roman number one, ye kya hoga in the axilla? Roman number two is in the spiral groove. Roman number three is on the lateral aspect of the arm, lateral aspect of the arm. And now we come down into the cubital fossa. Now look. Now we come down here. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what is this muscle? That's the brachioradialis. That's the brachioradialis. What is this muscle here? That's the pronated teres. Okay, so that's the brachioradialis. That's the pronated teres. And where's the radial nerve now? The radial nerve is now coming the cubital fossa. This, this is the best way to understand, Doctor Deeraj. This is the best way to understand. What is orthodox? If you understand this only, then you will understand the pictures, my son. If you understand this only, then you will understand the pictures, right? Basic concept you have to understand. Otherwise, you are not going to understand the pictures. I'll show you the pictures. Just have some patience. Understand this first. Clear? So first is the axilla. Second is the spiral root. Third is the lateral aspect of the arm. And this is Roman number four. And this is going to be the cubital fossa. In the cubital fossa, the radial nerve now divides into two branches. Okay, it divides into two branches. One is the superficial branch, and the other one is the deep branch. Superficial and deep branch. Okay. Now, what is the radial nerve supply? The superficial branch and the deep branch. I'll be showing this. I'll be showing you the pictures also. First, understand this only. Then you'll understand the pictures. If you do not know the theory part. No visual are you going to understand. Clear. So be clear with your concepts first, and then see the visuals. Right. So this is going. This is going to divide into two branches. One is the superficial branch, and one is the deep branch. Right. So I just make the radial nerve, uh, the branches of the radial nerve. So in the cubital fossa. The radial nerve divides into two branches. One is the superficial branch, and one is the deep branch. Superficial branch, deep branch. The deep branch is also known as the posterior interosseous nerve. Posterior interosseous nerve. So clear. So one in the axilla. Axilla, you know the branches. Second is in the spiral groove. In the spiral groove, you know the branches. Third is on the lateral aspect of the arm. So on the lateral aspect of the arm, you know what muscles it supplies. And the last one is the cubital fossa. It divides into superficial and deep branch. The deep branch is known as the posterior interosseous nerve. And this posterior interosseous nerve is going to pierce, pierces the supinator. Pierces the supinator and supplies all the muscles. And supplies all the muscles on the dorsal aspect. Supplies all the muscles on the dorsal aspect. 
just remember this. This is the easiest way to understand the radial nerve. Clear? So pierces the supinator and supplies all the muscles on the dorsal aspect. Now, what does the superficial branch do? The superficial branch is sensory. Sensory matlab, it's a cutaneous branch, sensory. So what does it do? It goes below the brachioretialis. Goes below the brachioretialis. Lies in the roof of roof of snuff box. Lies in the roof of the snuff box and supplies the skin. Supplies the skin on the dorsum of the hand. Supplies the skin on the dorsum of the hand and proximal phalanges of lateral two and a half fingers. Proximal phalanges of lateral two and a half fingers. Okay, so in the cubatiform, the radial nerve divides into a superficial and deep branch. The superficial branch goes below this muscle, which is this muscle, the most lateral muscle here. That's the brachioretialis. And if you just lift the brachioretialis, if you just lift the brachioretialis, you find a nerve going below the brachioretialis. What's that? That's the superficial branch of radial nerve. Goes below the brachioretialis. Comes here. Comes here. Lies in the roof of the cubat. Uh, uh, lies in the roof of anatomical snuff box. Here, yep, that's a box. So who lies in the roof of the snuff box? That's a radial nerve. And now the radial nerve goes to the dorsal aspect. It supplies the skin on the dorsum of the hand and the proximal phalanges of a lateral two and a half fingers. Lateral two and a half fingers. Okay. So that's a complete radial nerve for you. Now see the slides, you will understand this. Okay. So I've just told you the radial nerve, the course of the radial nerve, how it goes from the axilla to the spiral groove to the lateral aspect of the arm to the cubital fossa and its branches. Like you would ask me, the, the triceps is supplied twice, right? The meter head of triceps is supplied twice. It by axilla is supplied with that, and once it is supplied in the spiral groove. Now, why, why, why is the meter head of triceps supplied twice? Because it's the largest head of triceps. It's the most bulkiest head of triceps, the medial head, and that is why it is supplied twice. It is supplied once in the axilla and once in the spiral groove. It receives twice no supply. Okay, so have a look at the slides now and quickly tell me. <coughs> okay, look at this. Now tell me, what is this now? Where is this part of the radial nerve line? Come on, students, now answer. What is this part of the radial nerve? What is this now? What is this? That's the spiral groove. That's the spiral groove. So that's the radial nerve in the spiral groove. Before that, before that, the radial nerve was in the axilla. And the radial nerve will now go to the anterior aspect of the arm. It would then lie in the uh, it would then lie in the lateral aspect of the arm, then it would go into the cubital fossa. Cubital fossa. Clear students? So these are the branches of radial nerve along its course. So I've just told you the radial nerve. Right. No. Just one small topic I'll tell you. I just told you the branches of the radial nerve, the course of the radial nerve. Right. Now, one more topic I have to tell you. Spaces around the arm. Spaces around the arm. So have a look. Spaces around the arm. Here I start. That's the scapula. Tell me students, which is this aspect of the scapula? So just go through this radial nerve, then later I tell you the lesions of the radial nerve. Lesions of radial nerve. Okay. Once you're clear with the course of radial nerve, once you're clear with what branches are given at what level of radial nerve, then we start with the lesions of the radial nerve. So lesions would be high lesions, low lesions. High lesions are one in the axilla, second is in the spiral groove, and low lesions are on the lateral aspect of the arm and the cubital fossa. You'll understand all these lesions, you understand the course first, and then we go to the lesions of radial nerve. Okay, so before that, I'll finish this topic later. I'll come to the lesions of radial nerve in the later part, right? So, which aspect of the arms, uh, which aspect of uh, the body are you looking at? That's the dorsal aspect. 
that's the scapula, that's the spine of the scapula, that's the acromion process of the scapula. This is the humerus and that's the spiral groove, the spiral groove. Now tell me, once again students, what is this muscle which arises from the infraglenoid tubercle? Sorry, what is this muscle which arises from the infraglenoid tubercle of scapula? What is that muscle? That's the lat that's a long head of triceps. Not lateral, that's a long head of triceps. And tell me now, what is, what is this muscle here? Uh, I'll make it with this color. What is this muscle which arises from the uh, scapula? Dorsal aspect, lateral bottom. Come on students, what is this muscle which arises from the scapula, the dorsal aspect, ka lateral bottom? Anyone, anyone, anyone? One is teres minor, the other one is teres major. Teres minor, teres major. Anyone, you can tell me the insertion of teres minor. Teres minor is getting inserted on the greater tubercle of humerus. Teres minor. Teres minor inserted on the posterior uh, third impression of the greater tubercle. And where is the insertion of teres major? Look, 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 students, the teres major is going in front. Ye aake ja hai. It's going in front and getting inserted on the Metal lip of the bicipital groove. The metal lip of the bicipital groove. That's the insertion of teres major. Teres major. Now look, the same slide. If I draw, if I draw the same slide from a different view, from a different view, I'm drawing this. Look, I'm drawing the same slide from uh, anterior aspect, anterior side. I'm drawing the slide. They go from the anterior view. Okay. So that's the lesser tubercle. And that's the greater tubercle, lesser and greater tubercle. Okay, so now you tell me, mm. what is this muscle which was beginning from the infraglenoid tubercle? What is this muscle? The long head of triceps. Now it is going back side, no? That's the long head of triceps. What is this corocard process and what's this acromic process? So what is this view? You're looking this from front. That's a med that's a lesser tubercle, greater tubercle, and that's the bicepital groove. And now you tell me what is this muscle which begins from here and which was going back side? What was this? That's a teres minor. And what is this muscle which begins from the scapula and comes and gets inserted on the medial lip of the bicepital groove in front? What was that muscle? That was a teres major. Teres major, this is teres minor, that's a long head of triceps. Now we get spaces here. Look, we get spaces here. You get a space here like this. You get a space here like this. And you get a space here like this. Clear students, same I'm drawing here like this. And you get a space here like this. So what is this space? Come on students. Now what is this space? This is the upper triangular space. Upper triangular space. This is going to be the lower triangular space. And this is going to be the quadrangular space. Upper triangular, lower triangular, and quadrangular space. The same view. So that's the dorsal view. Dorsal. And this is the anterior view or the ventral view. Dorsal and ventral view. So clear students? So three muscles are going to form this. I'll just label the names of the muscles for you. What is this muscle? To this minor. What is this muscle? Teres major. And what is this muscle? The long head of triceps. The long head of triceps. Okay, so you get three spaces here. Upper triangular, lower triangular. This is the lower triangular. That's the upper triangular space and that's the quadrangular space. Quadrangular space. Same here. Same, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. Upper triangular, lower triangular and quadrangular space. Are you following this students? So what are the what are the contents of the spaces? Contents of the upper triangular space. If you can quickly tell me upper triangular space contents. Upper triangular space contents is an artery here which comes from the dorsal aspect of the scapula. What is that? Circumflex. 
scapular artery. So complex scapular artery. Lower triangular space, these are very important MCQs for you. Look, very important MCQs. Lower triangular space, you get the radial nerve and profunda brachii artery. Radial nerve and profunda brachii artery. And quadrangular space, what are the contents? Axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Is this clear, students? How the spaces are formed by three muscles and the bone humerus? So, teres minor, teres major, the long head of triceps, and the shaft of the humerus. Right? Teres minor, teres major, the long head of the uh, the long head of the triceps, and the shaft of the humerus. This is going to form three spaces: upper triangular, lower triangular, and the quadrangular. What are the boundaries of upper triangular space? Teres minor, teres major, and the long head of triceps. What are the boundaries of lower triangular space? The teres major, the long head of triceps, and the shaft of the humerus. And what are the boundaries of quadrangular space? The teres minor, teres major, the long head of triceps, and the neck of the humerus. The contents are very important. Upper triangular space is an artery here. An artery which begins from the costal surface of the scapula. Yo, the artery which begins from the costal surface, it winds around the scapula and here it comes to the dorsal surface. It winds around the scapula and here it comes on the dorsal aspect of scapula. This artery is going to wind around the scapula. This is known as the circumflex scapular artery. Circumflex scapular artery. What passes through the lower triangular space is the radial nerve and the profunda brachii artery and the radial nerve in the lower triangular space then enters the spiral groove and in the spiral groove the radial nerve gives three muscular and two cutaneous branches that is what I just told you. What is the muscle about the spiral groove? What was the muscle about the spiral groove? The lateral head of triceps. And what is the muscle below the spiral groove? The medial head of triceps. So what is the radial nerve supply in the spiral groove? The lateral head, the medial head. And the nerve which supplies the medial head also supplies the anconius. Right? And quadrangular space ki boundaries, teres minor, teres major, the long head of triceps and the neck of the humerus. And there's an artery which passes through the space. There's an artery which winds around the humerus. That's the posterior circumflex humeral artery and the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve. Is this all clear to you students? Any doubts you have, you tell me. Any doubts? So that's about the spaces of the arm. That's about the radial nerve. Just go through this radial nerve. I've told you just the radial nerve. And later we then come to the... Huh, later we come to the lesions of radial nerve in some other part. Okay? Just have a look at this muscle students and quickly tell me what is this muscle? What is this muscle about the spine of scapula? Come on. About the spine of scapula, that's the supraspinatus. Below the spine of the scapula, what is this muscle? Infraspinatus. The supraspinatus, infraspinatus. What is this now? This muscle on the dorsal aspect, medial border. Dorsal aspect, medial border, that's the levator scapulae. That's the rhomboidus minor and that's the rhomboidus major. Rhomboidus minor, rhomboidus major. So dorsal aspect, medial border. From the superior angle to the spine, that's levator scapulae. Opposite to the spine, rhomboidus minor. Below the spine, rhomboidus major. What's this muscle? Teres minor. And here is the teres major. And that's a long head of triceps. Long head of triceps. So if I draw this muscle here, that was teres minor, teres major, long head of triceps. What is this area now? What is this space here? That's the upper triangular space. The teres major, the long head of triceps, and the shaft of the humerus, that's the lower triangular space, and this becomes the quadrangular space. Quadrangular space. That's the axillary nerve, that's the radial nerve. Okay? Identify this muscle here, that's the deltoid muscle. Deltoid. Clear? Okay? What is this nerve, anyone? Students, what is this nerve? Hmm. What is this nerve which is coming from a notch on the superior border of the scapula? On the superior border, there's a notch here. What is this notch known as? On the superior border of the scapula, there's a notch. What is that notch known as? The supra 
scapular notch. Suprascapular notch. On the superior border of scapula, there's a notch, suprascapular notch. And who comes to this? That's a suprascapular nerve. Suprascapular nerve comes from here. And this suprascapular nerve is going to supply the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Supra and the infraspinatus. Clear to all of you? Shall I answer this? Answer this MCQ. A 25 years old man fractures his right tibia in a vehicular accident. His right leg is fixed in a cast and requires underarm crunches to ambulate. That means he is using crunches to walk. Two weeks later, he comes to the clinic with right upper extremity weakness and numbness. He has no neck or arm pain. The person is concerned because he is a right-handed and cannot perform work as an electrician. On examination, there is diminished strength on extension of the right wrist. Diminished uh, right wrist extension with an absent triceps jaw. Injury to which of this nerve nerves? So what is the answer here? Which of the nerve is involved? The radial nerve. The radial nerve supplies the extensor muscles and these extensors are responsible for extension at the wrist joint. If this extension is lost, the wrist goes down. What do you get here? You get a wrist drop. Wrist drop. So wrist drop is due to paralysis of radial nerve. Okay, you get a wrist drop. Clear. What is the axillary nerve supply? Students, I'll just tell you. Axillary nerve supplies one is the uh, axillary nerve supplies one. Anyone? What does it supply? Deltoid. Axillary nerve supplies deltoid. Deltoid. Teres minor. Teres minor. And gives a cutaneous branch. What is that cutaneous branch? Or known as upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. Upper lateral cutaneous nerve of arm. That's a branch of axillary nerve. So axillary nerve supplies two muscles, the deltoid, the teres minor and it gives a cutaneous branch, that's the upper lateral cutaneous nerve arm. What is the suprascapular nerve supply? It supplies the supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Supraspinatus and infraspinatus. What is the action of supraspinatus? Abduction. 0 to 15 degrees of abduction and infraspinatus does lateral rotation. Okay, supraspinatus does abduction, infraspinatus does lateral rotation. And medial nerve supplies fine muscles in the hand. Fine muscles in the hand. Abductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis, the opponent's pollicis, the first and the second lumbricals for fine muscles in the hand. Okay, students, I hope this is clear to you. I'll just brief you about our platform before we go to the uh, something else. So we have got this plus subscription students in which we have got daily live classes, live quizzes mm -hmm. and uh, you get learning from the top educators. You can study anytime, anywhere with access to 25,000 plus courses and now we are coming with printed notes for our 12 months and plus subscription students. We've got an iconic subscription where you get the best of an academy and the pre-planter and the pre-planter with an academy, right? What are the uh, features of our special classes? Special classes features. You've got an interactive live class. Ambulate means to walk, bacha to walk. Ambulate is to walk, no? His fracture is tibia, so to walk he needs crunches to ambulate, that is to walk, right? So we've got interactive live classes, we've got poll for the learners, raise a hand technique wherein when you press the icon you can talk to the educator directly, never miss a class with proper notifications being given, lecture notes in the form of PDF and anywhere, anytime you can attend the class and get your doubts cleared. Okay, the updated and highly effective question banks on 25,000 plus curated MCQs with their explanations are for you. This our, these are our star performers in this exams. They have got very good ranks. Now, we've already started with Focus FMG batch, the Target Next 2022 batch and Need PG 21 Emergency MCQ batch. We started with one month PG, uh, Need PG, one month schedule and the grant test schedule is already there on the net. Yes, students, this is a, this is a very special thing for you. Now, we are starting with NEET PG 21 final bout, a final punch, a final bout with 
all our educators coming together and preparing a special test, a grand test for you, which is going to be held on 4th of September. 4th of September, a special grand test for you. So students, make it a point to give this grand test. Tell your friends, tell your colleagues who are giving the CT exams, okay? So free grand test, it is on 4th of September, specially made by the educators, right? Uh, with two months subscription, with 12 months subscription, sorry, you get two months free and four months, four years subscription we've started with for our foundation students. Download the Unacademy app. Yes, student. Yes, Risha, are you clear? Ambulate meaning to walk. Ambulation is to walk. So, TBI is fractured. So, how will the person walk? He needs to have crunches, no? And when this crunches, because of the, you know, because of the pressure of the crunches, who's injured? The radial nerve. Radial nerve. So, students, what I have taught you today is the course of the radial nerve. Only course of the radial nerve. I told you the branches of radial nerve along its course. Fine. So, and I told you the spaces around the arm, the upper triangular, lower triangular and quadrangular. Later somewhere, in some other lectures, I'll tell you the lesions of radial nerve. Lesions, right? So, that's the course. Understand the course first. Understand the branches and then you will understand the lesions very well. I hope you understand all this. I hope you are clear with all these concepts of the radial nerve. Thank you. Thank you for patient listening. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you.